Okay, guys, I'm gonna make this really quick. Um, so that's where I was saying the gap between these two pieces of plastic that I printed for my Z and my X axis. There is a 1.84 gap right from the zero position on your end stop. So you have to take that in consideration. So for moving 100 forward, you have to add that 1.84 to it as well. So that way you'll know what you need to subtract from. So I moved my axis 100 degrees, I mean 100 millimeters forward. So here goes the math. I'm at 1.84 for the beginning. I moved 100, got 127 exact. Now you have to subtract 127 from the 1.84 and I got 125.16. Now you're going to divide that number by 100 of what you asked for. So you're going to divide from what you asked for from what you got. So that division would be 125.16 divided that by 100 is what you asked for. Oh wait, no, I got that wrong. I have it backwards. It's 100 what you asked for divided by what you got, 125.16. You get this weird jumble numbers here, and that isn't what you're really needing to use. I mean, you use that, but you don't need to calculate that in, in anything. Because what you're going to do is you're going to your Merlin firmware underneath the movement settings, which should be right here. You'll see movement settings underneath the configuration.h file tab and uh, you'll go down to this part right here that says define default access steps per unit usually when you first download the Merlin firmware it's going to have 100, 100, 495 so 100 for the X, 100 for the Y, 400 for the Z and your extruder motor which pushes or pulls your fil filament is at 95 so when you're calculating this, you're going to times this number by the 100 that you originally would have with the Merlin firmware. So you'll times this by 100. You see that number? And we get this number 79.989773090444231. I put that into my Merlin firmware. You can round this up if you want to, if you want to round to the nearest tenth. Basically, that's supposed to be a 9. I mean, 8, 9, just round it up, 1, it'll be a 9. So 79.90, if you want to do that, you can do that. I like to get really accurate with my stuff, so I'll just input the whole code. I don't care. So I put that exact portion in there. We upload the firmware. Make sure that you're on the correct uh, COM port when you plug in your USB to your motherboard, over, I mean, your computer over here. So the COM port I'm on is 5. You'll just double check that right here and you'll make sure you have the right board attached so whatever your motherboard is I have a MKS board but it runs the Mega 2560 the, the Mega from the Arduino and once you're done with that you'll just go over to here that and upload the code I already uploaded mine and make sure that you're not on the prompter face make sure you disconnect the prompter face before you try uploading a new firmware to your motherboard and then you'll reconnect using the right baud rate. I'm at 15, 115, 200. And you'll home your access. Make sure that you're at a zero position. So you'll hit home. It'll move to the zero. And then you're going to move 100 again. So you see I selected 100 on my X forward. Bam. So we'll go ahead and move over 100. And then you'll use your calipers again just to make sure your math is correct. And mine was, I already know what mine is. If I could just get this thing to turn back on. I was at 1.80, and which basically is dead on. It was 1.180, and that's what it should be. Because you got to calculate the gap that you have of the 1.84 uh, number that I first started off with for my reference. So we'll just attach this to right here and that's a little too it's because it's not fully there we go uh, hold on it's hard to do it while I'm holding this freaking camera so bear with me guys 
and there you have it it was 1.84 uh, it's just a little off but it was 1.84 so it's teetering in between the two but that's perfect that means this position is accurate every time I move it 100 paces it'll, or millimeters it'll move 100 millimeters or 200 or 15 or whatever I decide to set it to that's perfect because when you export your files into G-Code, G-Code is nothing but numeric numbers and it tells the stepper motors what position to put your extruder at or your X at and how much filament to extrude at one time and it tells the printer everything in numbers and if your numbers are correct like how you've seen mine is now my prints will come out correctly as well you won't have to worry about failed prints or anything crazy happening now usually like I was telling you the x-axis and the y-axis are usually linked together with the same number so that number that 79.98774 whatever the heck numbers I was just telling you a second ago that would usually I would usually copy that to the y because they're both supposed to be together but I'm not sure at the moment because these are different motors. This one is a NEMA 17 and that one's a 23. They're bigger, that one's bigger and this one's smaller and they may have different ratings. So I have to calculate each individual axes. And that's fine, I don't mind doing that because I want to make sure my stuff is accurate. But that's how you go about it. If you have the same as that motors though, say your printer is like a regular a ANET A8 or a uh, CR10, uh, uh, Creality and uh, Ender, or any of those 3D printers you could buy off of eBay or Amazon that comes from China for the most part, um, they will always have the same exact stepper motors. So they'll have five of these or two, four of these or whatever the case may be. They'll have usually a NEMA 17. So you can copy the X and the Y together. But if you're building a printer from scratch and you have different stepper motors, I would say calculate each individual axis steppers because your motors may not all be the same so that's the end of this video i hope you guys like it please like and subscribe let me know what you think uh, hopefully you guys are liking these videos i'm trying really hard not to make them too long uh, my name is legitly and i'm signing out